configuration management. So configuration management is concerned with focusing on maintaining up-to-date documentation on a network's configuration. You have different procedures here including asset management, baselining, cable management, change management, and network documentation. So asset management. This is the system of tracking your network components and managing the life cycles of these components. So when you're talking about the network assets life cycle, we're talking about preparing for it. That's where we're budgeting for the item, items and gathering the requirements. We're going to plan for it. We're going to determine what components we're going to acquire in the first place. Are we going to go with Brocade or Cisco or Juniper switches, for instance? Design. We're going to determine the best configuration for the device we want. So now that we've decided on a Cisco device, and we decided we're going to get a Cisco 3600, how are we going to configure that device? Then we're going to implement it. We're going to actually purchase it, install it, and configure those devices for use in our network. At that point, we switch over to the operation portion, the operate. And this is where we operate it on a daily basis, making sure that any break, fix actions are completed. So if one of the power supplies dies, we buy a new one, we swap out the power supply, things like that. And then lastly, we're going to optimize. The last part of the asset management lifecycle is to optimize it and continue to improve our network design by purchasing new devices and retiring the old devices. Baselining is our collection of data under normal operating conditions. This becomes very useful in comparison when you're troubleshooting network issues. For example, how do you know if your network isn't running normally if you don't understand what normal is? You need to understand that, for instance, that the network normally operates at 80% capacity or 90% capacity. And so if you see a spike up to 99%, you might go, something's wrong, let's figure it out. So baseline is an important first step in your networks. Cable management. I know this is covered in A plus as well, but cable management is very important. Notice the picture on the bottom left. That is not proper cable management. If you look above it, you can see a properly cabled switch. Notice each switch is labeled in the in there with a little dot with a excuse me with a little label saying what port number it's going to and what switch port it's going to. So it's very easy to figure out based on its naming convention. If you notice the one underneath the text here in the middle, that has a nice big arch. That's giving it a good open airflow so these systems can be cool. When you have improper cabling, like in the bottom left corner, you don't have good cooling and you can actually cause problems for your systems. The one on the bottom right shows you an example of how switches are patched into patch panels. Cable management is all about documenting your network's existing cable infrastructure. You should have diagrams, cable labeling, locations of punch down blocks, source cable locations, and destination cable locations. All of these things will help you to determine if you have a problem where that problem stems from. Using standard naming conventions is considered a best practice. So for instance, you might use 2F and then the office number to determine that this is the second floor, you know, 2F103, it's second floor, room 103. And that way you can know that that's where that switch is located, or that's where that jack is located. Change management. Change management is a system that we use to account for upgrades, installs, and network outages. We Even simple router and switch upgrades may cause unwanted downtime, so they have to be pre-coordinated. Just because you're working on a switch and you need to do a quick reboot, if you that quick reboot may take 24 users offline. And if you're dealing with one of the backbone switches, it could take down the entire network. You have to consider your downtimes, your impacts, and the vulnerabilities that are introduced anytime you add something new. Let's say I'm going to add a new switch to the network. I need to figure out what operating system it's running, what version of the Cisco IOS, for instance, and make sure that it's the latest one and that it's patched up and ready to go. Otherwise, I'm bringing more vulnerabilities into my network. So change management is important, and management will have a say in this before you get approved to put new things on the network. Network documentation. You have to document your network appropriately. We talked a little bit about this when we talked about cable management, but it's really important to keep your materials up to date. Very often we get pressure to quick, quick, go install this machine, and if we don't update the network that that machine has been installed, we won't know about it, and it will lead to vulnerabilities in our network. So you have to consider including all sorts of things in your documentation. Things like the contact information for the administrators, the different policies you have, the network maps and diagrams, the documentations that the vendors have for the warranties and who your points of contacts are. So if things go wrong at 3 in the morning, the guy who comes in can know who to call. And the wiring schematics of how everything is cabled together. And that's our basics of configuration management.